I pursue and I cling to you because I feel your grip on my life. I keep my soul close to your heart. Dear God, there's nothing that's sweeter than being in your presence. In your presence, God, we are whole and we are complete. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. Your word says even birds would rather build their nests close to your presence, oh God. Because there they find rest, which they cannot find anywhere else. So God, I pray that as we come in worship to you, I pray that we will find that joy, that peace, Lord. That if there is anything in our hearts that is causing us to be distracted, problems, God, projects, whatever it is, this year, Corona, whatever it is, oh God. We pray that it bows to the King of Kings who is above everything else. Spirit of God, we invite you. We invite you to speak. We invite you, God, to do what only you can do. This cannot be done by song or by word, but only by God. we pray. Amen.
nothing, Lord, that can take your presence away.
every time I sing this song, it gives me so much courage. It gives me so much confidence because I know when I build my life on Christ alone, He is a solid ground. Many times we try to put our hope in people. We try to put our hopes in our careers, in our academic lives, in everything that the world says is success. But there is only one firm foundation. And this is Jesus Christ. So Jesus, we thank you. We thank you because we will not be shaken. You 
God, we bless you, Lord. We bow down before you, O God. We bow down before you this afternoon, O God. You are the eternal God. You are Yahweh. You are the Alpha and the Omega, O God. We bless you. We acknowledge you for who you are this afternoon, God. You are God and we bow before you. Besides you, we do not have anything else. We do not have anyone else. And we bow today. We bow, we bow, we bow, oh Lord. You are the eternal God. You are the almighty God. You are Jehovah Shammah, you are peace, oh Lord. You are Jehovah Rapha, you are a healer, oh God. You are Jehovah Jireh, you are a provider, oh God. Yes, it is to you that we bow this morning. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, Lord, and we bow down. We bow down and we crown you as king. You are king to us, oh Lord. You are the king of the world. You are the God who is above all else. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Just give thanks to God and worship Him. Just give thanks to God and worship Him. And just ex exalt His name. He is God. He is God above all else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Before we pray, I just want us to read one of my favorite Psalms. Psalms. 46, we are in a situation where the world is getting moved, where the mountains are being shaken. Those that we thought were stable, those that we thought were very strong are getting shaken. But the Bible reminds us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time, help in trouble. That is Psalms 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Verse 2 says, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Amen. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at the swelling. God is our refuge and our strength. Amen. I don't know who your strength is. I don't know what you have trusted in, in before. But this virus has taught us one thing. Nothing is sure. Nothing is sure. But God is still our refuge and strength. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want us to hang on verse 2. It says, Therefore, Amen. Therefore, because of that, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way. It's almost like Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because God is my refuge. Therefore, I will not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. I want us to just take time and affirm this in, to ourselves, wherever you are. Just cry to God, affirm him as your refuge. Affirm him as your refuge. Each one of us in our own way. Yes, God, bless you, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are my refuge. You are my refuge. You are the one that I run to. Oh, I bless you, Lord. You are my refuge. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God, you are our refuge. Therefore, we will not fear. You are our strength. Even when we are weak, we'll say we are strong. By your strength, O oh Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you. As the world is being shaken, we have a place to run to. And that is to you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Thank you, Lord, that we are assured 
in you. It doesn't matter what will happen around us and even to us. God, you are our refuge. You are our strength, O oh Lord. You are our strength, O oh Lord. And Father, we glory in this. Father, we rejoice in this. Father, we exult in this. Father, we celebrate that you are our refuge. Let's give him praise in the house, in the name of Jesus. Let's exalt him. Let's worship him. Let's adore him. Let's give him all the glory. He is God and not a man. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord, and we give you the glory and the honor. Amen, amen, amen. <coughs> Sorry. We bless the Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you turn to a neighbor in front or behind and wave, them, wave at them on my behalf and smile behind that mask? Please don't. Don't assume they will not see. <coughs> Just wave at them. Welcome the, them on my behalf. We thank God. Amen. And we thank God for the opportunity to be able to worship. And it's good to see the pews almost full. We just bless the Lord. Amen. It's a blessing. For many months we didn't have it. But God has given us opportunity to just come and worship him with one another. Do you know how many people are longing for this opportunity? Do you know how many people are committing suicide just because they don't have, don't have an opportunity like we do? We just give God the glory for the blessing of being able to fellowship and just be one an with one another. Amen. Do we have anyone visiting with us? My name is Simon Kibel, as I forget. I serve in the cell ministry. Amen. That's my boss. <laughs> Anyone visiting us for the very first time? Do we have anyone? Anyone? Yes, we have our sister here. You are visiting? Oh, okay. There's somebody behind there. Just raise up your hand so that we are able to see you. Anyone visiting? Amen. We have, uh, we have a couple. Anyone? Ah, even this side. And this side. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And even over there, we are so grateful to have you. Before Corona... We used to call you aside after the service and share a drink and a snack with you. Unfortunately, we live in difficult times, but we hug you in our hearts and we receive you. Amen? Welcome, welcome. We thank God for uh, each one of you. Yeah, we want to take this time to just listen to the church news and then we'll go to the next. <laughs> Every Sunday at 10 a.m. we have the CLA online services on YouTube and links are shared via WhatsApp groups. Kids Connection services will resume on the first Sunday of February. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. our prayer services are hosted on Zoom and links are shared via WhatsApp. On Wednesdays, cell meetings take place on different social platforms as shared by your cell leader. For more information, visit claronda.org. Follow us and like us on social media. Thank you for watching. That was a short one, eh? Let me just affirm uh, some, <clears throat> we have some other announcements. The, um, the first one is that our weekly fellowships have resumed. That is the Tuesday prayers, as well as the cell meetings. We are back on, so please plug in. Uh, uh, the Tuesday prayer meetings have also been upgraded. They are not only... Do we, uh, they are going to be on Zoom. Amen? So another opportunity to just uh, get in touch with people, although it's virtual. So, and then the Wednesday fellowships are still going on through various social media uh, platforms. And Fabrice will be sharing a Zoom link so that you are able to join in uh, into the Tuesday prayers. So please uh, connect and be able to join us for this. Um, secondly, the visits to Inango are still happening. Uh, our sister Joy 
is still receiving those of us who may want uh, to visit uh, the Inango Tivet School. So please uh, connect. Our sister Joy is over there at the back. She's standing up. So please register with her that you may be able to visit uh, Inango uh, Tivet School at Busanza. Amen. I want to invite our elder Nicholas to share a testimony with us. He's a walking miracle. We give God the glory. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Uh, I thank God for this opportunity to stand before you, my family, and to ask you to join me in thanking God for saving my life. Uh, <laughs> praise God. I was wondering if I should say this, because many people survive accidents, terrible ones, but I felt during this time when we hear many bad news that it's very important that I share this testimony to really show that God is able to save, he's still protecting his children, he's still a miracle-working God. It was uh, last Wednesday, I went to visit to one of our farms uh, with a driver, and by, in the east, we went to Kirehe, and by around six, we we're coming, around five, sorry, we we're coming back from the field. Outside in Ngoma, those who know the eastern province and the road coming back to Kigali, it started to rain. And um, uh, my driver wanted obviously to reach Kigali on time. Uh, we're given the, the deadline to be back in Kigali by seven. So he a little bit speeded up and uh, as it was raining, we also passed another vehicle in the opposite direction, and somehow he felt the other car was getting closer, so he tried to avoid it, and off we went off the road. Hit the curb, and the car rolled once, twice, or three times. I remember only one time. The other times I didn't remember. And he went through a fence by you know, the homes of the, of the people near the road. One fence, the second one, and we were stopped by an anti-hill. And when the car finally stopped, I was sitting in my seat with my belt on, with my glasses on, the driver the same, and <laughs> praise God. And because of what was happening, the engine maybe was heating up. I could see the smoke starting to come out. I told the driver, let's get out. Miraculously, the doors could open. Because I was near the side where the fence is where I could not open the door, so I came out from the driver's side. And we checked ourselves. We're all fine. And Praise God, there was no single scratch on any of us. No bone was broken, no drop of blood. The car was packed with stuff in the back, you know, coming from the farm. We have oils, we have beans, we have all the things, but nothing moved to come and hit us. There was, uh, the windshield broke a little bit, but other glasses were just intact. When I came out, I just felt this was a miracle. God saved our lives. He's still a miracle working God. And I will not say he prolonged my life because my days are in his hand. But I will say rather the enemy want to shorten them. But God said, no, I'm still around to testify of his, his goodness, his mercy, and his power. So I just wanted you to join me in praising him. Give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen.
Let's, ju <clears throat> Let's thank God for our brother. Our Father, we are so grateful. Thank you that you are our refuge and strength. And thank you for protecting our brother and keeping him. God, this is a testimony that you protect, you keep, and you are able to do it. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> uh, we want to get to a time of giving, and we are going to show the numbers for giving on the screen. So I'm going to pray for our giving, and then after I pray, our brother, Elder Precious, Dr. Precious Kondwani will be sharing the word with us. So we, let's pray for the offering, even as we also pray for our brother. Our Father, we are so grateful. We continue to just give you glory for your blessing and for your presence. You are the God who is with us. You are the God who saves us. We bless you for the opportunity to give. We bless you for the opportunity to be able to work and get some income and just bless your house. And as we worship in this way, we remember many that are not able to do it. We pray that God, you'd bless them. You'd provide for them open doors of opportunity that they may be able to worship you in this way. We bless you for our brother as he will be coming to minister. May you be with him and may you show your strength and your power even as he ministers. Give him the boldness and the utterance. Speak to him even as he shares with us. In Jesus' name, amen. afternoon Christian Life Assembly and happy 2021 to you all. Good afternoon Christian Life Assembly. <laughs> Wonderful. It is an honor and privilege to share God's word today. For those of you who don't know me or are new to this assembly, my names are Kondwani Precious. I'm a husband of one wife, a Proverbs 31 woman. I believe she's here somewhere, but I can't see her, and my heart is anxious. <laughs> Wonderful. You see a raised hand there. That's Ida, um, my sweetheart. Preaching at the beginning of the year is such a wonderful thing, because for one, I can wish you all the best for 2021 and feel like I'm done with you. I remember being in a meeting one other new year when the host said, 
good morning, I love you, I care for you, and that is multiplied by 365. <laughs> then he went on and said, and I'm done with you for this year. <laughs> but it is such a great opportunity to be able to connect as we begin the year. But most importantly, preaching at the beginning of the year is an opportunity to lay a foundation, a foundation which hopefully provides direction to our lives. And I think such a task was begun very well by our senior pastor, Pastor Andrew two Sundays back, when he introduced the theme for 2021, new seasons, new frontiers, with a tagline, win, grow, and win. You will remember the chant, win, grow, win. Win, grow, win. Huh? Win, grow, win. I do believe that by the time we hit June, we will not have forgotten that tagline. If you forget, it's, it's your problem. And Pastor Amos added to that last week when he challenged us on the need for consistency and commitment as contenders for the faith and not pretenders. Upon being called and being established in Christ, are we going out to win others so that they can also become? Are we growing and helping others grow in their faith? Are we going out to share God's word, to show God's love more and more, and send forth those who hear the word so that they can go out and save God? My task today is to talk more on that tagline, win, grow, and win, as we meditate on second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter number two and verse two. Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter two, verse number two. But before reading that verse, let me refresh our memory by briefly explaining these three words that we have talked about for three Sundays now. By win, W-I-N, we mean bringing souls to Christ, or simply put, sharing the gospel so that people can become born again or become Christian. By grow, we mean discipling those you win so that they can mature in the faith and be established. And by win, W-E-A-N, we mean letting them go out so that they themselves can share God's love and make disciples of others and increase the numbers of those people who follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now to 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. From the New International Version, it says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. This is Apostle Paul writing this letter from prison, talking to his son and disciple, Timothy, encouraging him on a number of things, and I have put those in three. He's encouraging him on the what, he's encouraging him on the who, and he's encouraging him on the why. And these will be our guiding points this afternoon. The what, the things you have heard me say. The who, entrust to reliable people. And the why, so that they are qualified to teach others. Let us begin with the what. The Apostle Paul says, the things you have heard me say. Paul and Timothy provide us one of the most beautiful relationships in the Bible. While others consider it a more father-son relationship, others consider it more as a pest-setting or mentoring relationship, which also became a proper partnership in ministry. However, and whichever way you want to look at this relationship, it is clear that it surpassed expectations on many fronts. 
And it is this relationship that will help us this morning to learn as we meditate on our theme, win, grow, and win. Look at how Paul begins when he says, the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. I would like us to consider a couple of things here. Number one, what have you heard? You yourself, seated here this afternoon, what is it that you have heard? And number two, from who have you heard it from? From who have you heard it? Timothy, we believe, had heard from the apostles' lips a certain forms of sound doctrine, something in the nature of a creed or some summary of gospel truth, which was a deposit placed in his charge. And in committing it to him, he emphasizes that it is confirmed by other witnesses who are fellow Christian believers. That is why the verse says, the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. The context of this verse is actually Timothy's ordination into ministry. But Paul and Timothy had been together for a long time, even before and after the ordination, meaning that there were many other opportunities where Timothy could learn nuggets of truth from his interaction with Paul as they shared their life together. Again, I ask you, seated here this afternoon, what have you heard? Why this question is fundamental is because it is foundational in our Christian work. What you have heard about Jesus, what you have heard about salvation, what you have heard about Christianity, what you have heard about humanity, what you have heard about us as humans and our relationship with God, is that the truth? Is that the real deal? Can you trust those from whom you have heard it? Because you see, before you go out to entrust anything to anyone, or before you yourself invest your time to learn and grow more into something, you want to know that you are trusting the right things. You want to be sure that what you have heard is the correct information. Actually, if we go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 14, you will see this repeated. When Paul writes and says, but as for you, Timothy, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. This is why this question is important. Whatever you have heard, who have you heard it from? And is that the correct thing? I would like to outline, to out, outline, outline a few fundamentals of the Christian faith this afternoon, which many bodies of believers have taught, which this assembly has taught, which many other Christians across, across the globe have taught, because I believe that that should be what you have heard. And if it is not, don't be dismayed because we will correct it. And you'll be able to see even as we go through our sharing this afternoon. It is summarized in five things. Number one, scripture alone. The Bible alone is our highest authority. So if you are reading Nostradamus or Hadley Church or Diaries of a Wimpy Kid series and you think that is authority, you are mistaken. That is not because the Bible alone is our highest authority. Hallelujah. Number two, faith alone. We are saved through faith alone in Jesus Christ. 
So if you think you can believe something else for your salvation other than the completed work of Jesus on the cross, you are mistaken, and we need to have a conversation. Because we are saved through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Number three, grace alone. We are saved by grace, by the grace of God alone. So if you think there's anything you can do to attain salvation, you are mistaken. Because our righteousness is like filthy rags. That's what the Bible says. We are saved by grace alone and not by anything else. Number four, Christ alone. Jesus Christ alone is our Lord, Savior, and King. No one else. So if you think your mom or your dad or your godfather or your godmother or your boss is Lord, Savior, and King, you're mistaken. We need to have a conversation because Jesus Christ alone is our Lord, Savior, and King. And number five, to the glory of God alone. We live for the glory of God alone. So if you think you live for your own glory, or for the glory of someone else, or for the glory of something else, other than God, we need to have a conversation. Because we live for the glory of God alone. Again, I ask, what have you heard? If this is what you have heard, and you have believed it, then the things you have heard, and trust them to reliable people, so that they are able to also teach others. And that is how we transition to our second point of discussion this afternoon. Number two, the who. And trust to reliable people. If we look back at our guiding verse, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, and I'll keep repeating this verse, my hope is that by the end of this service, you would have memorized it. The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. So again, here is a question. Who are these reliable people that are being referred to? I would like to make a few submissions to you. Number one is that you and I are reliable people because... I'm sure that when you look back at your Christian life, you can remember people that have invested their life into you, providing counsel, support, praying for you, holding your hand to walk with you on the journey, and here you are. And because of their efforts, you may be considered reliable. Submission number two is that the people that you, as a reliable person, interacts with, whether it is at church, at home, it can be in the work setting, it can be in those different social circles that you find yourself in. The question is, are you willing and ready to pour your life into them, just as others have done to you, so that you can also become reliable? The grow in win, grow, and win is actually that. I would like to share with you a bit of my story. I became a Christian when I was 11, and I was in S1 at that time. And this was through the Ministry of the International Fellowship of Evangelical Students, IFES. Many of us here in East Africa have been part of FOCUS, whether it is FOCUS Uganda, FOCUS Kenya, Rwanda has GBUR. So the Malawi version of FOCUS is Student Christian Organization. 
and all these are affiliated to the International Fellowship of Evangelical Students. So when I got born again, there were these two gentlemen, God bless their heart, Sam and Stanley. I will not forget them. Sam as in the Sam of David. They were much older than me. They had stable jobs. So obviously they were busy people. But they made it a point to invest in me. They would come home, take me for prayer meetings, for hospital visits, for evangelistic campaigns, and many other things. They would also allow me to visit their office whenever I felt like I needed to connect with them on anything. These two gentlemen were working as librarians at the University of Malawi Library. And they reached a point of facilitating my membership of the library just so I can enter as a member without any problem because they wanted me to access them anytime I needed to. This was my journey from about 11 years to 16 years when I went to university, then until 21 when I graduated from university. I mean, my parents were concerned that I was spending time with people who were much older than my age. They thought I could be misled or maybe be taken advantage of. But to cut a long story short, here I am in Chigali, Rwanda, many years later, and very far away from home. And I'm preaching to people I've never seen since I was born. Now, this club happened in the first service as well, and I told them what I'm going to tell you now. I don't know what that club means. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that, can you imagine what would have been if they gave up on me? For me, I, I can't even imagine <laughs> what I could have ended up being. But they invested their time and their lives on me. I will be honest with you that I was also some sort of a troublemaker, even as a Christian, and these people did not leave me alone. I know that some of you would be interested to know about the troubles I made, <laughs> and I'm not gonna tell you. But for those of you who have itching ears, Let's do coffee. You buy the coffee, I come, <laughs> then I'm going to tell you everything. It is important for us to note that entrusting the treasures of God's truth into other people is such a commitment and, in, and investment of time. Because people must become reliable, just as you yourselves have become reliable. Can you imagine what can become of you? You yourself seated here this afternoon, what can become of you if you keep running away from those people who desire to pour their lives into you or to help you grow? Can you imagine what can become of those people that you are interfacing with in many places, but you're not ready and willing to help them grow? Young people in the house, look around. Look around you, young people, and if you see any adults in this auditorium who you feel like grabbing and asking them a question about life or something that's bothering you, do it. Because that may be an opportunity for you to begin your journey of transformation. And if you are the one to be grabbed, please don't tell them you're busy. Please open up, share your lives, support them, because that may be an opportunity for you to grow and invest in someone. I thought I could challenge a couple of people this afternoon, and maybe for everyone to feel safe, let me say a couple of groups. Firstly, those of you who avoid small group meetings and think that you can do this Christian thing as a Lone Ranger, well, it does not work like that. Fellowship of believers is a gift, and God has given people to help people because people need people. 
If you were here last Sunday, Pastor Amos put it well when he said, it is nearly impossible to attain growth in isolation. <laughs> I'm sure that uh, many of you have heard the story of that believer who was avoiding the fellowship of other believers. And so he was not found in any Christian meetings or any Christian uh, gatherings. And one day he was asked why he is rarely found in Christian fellowships. And his response was, I'm in the secret service of the army of the Lord. <laughs> well, there's no secret, thing, secret service to this thing called Christianity. It has to be done in the public, one helping one another, so that together we can grow. Secondly, I would like to challenge you who think you know everything. And so you tell yourself, I have learned enough and I don't need to ask anyone anything. Well, growth in any aspect of life does not stop. If you think you don't need to grow anymore, you will begin to die. Because anything that's not growing is dying. And while at that, I would like to speak with teenagers. Any teenagers in the house? Any teenagers in the house? I need some energy. Listen to me. Once I was a teenager, and when I was 16, I woke up one morning and realized I knew everything. Then I got to 21 and realized I knew nothing, even about the things I thought I knew. And as I've grown, it has become worse because I'm realizing as days go by, and I'm still growing, that there's so much that I have to learn. So learning does not stop. It is important for you to know that. Thirdly, I would like to challenge those of you who have been Christians for some time but are not willing to pour your lives into others. It is the responsibility of you as a Christian, in whatever context you find yourself in, to help others grow. Young people here need mentors. Boys need to become men, and they need you to help them become. Young professionals need to learn how to be good Christian professionals. Young ladies need to learn how to become good Christian women. Young entrepreneurs need to learn how to become good Christian entrepreneurs. Young Christians need to learn how to become better servants. And it is your responsibility to help them do that. That's how we help one another grow. And it is important, again, to be clear that if you want to win and grow others, you yourself must desire to grow. Because you cannot lead people where you have not been. And as you can imagine, most of that is outside these four walls of the church. So coming to church should not be like going to the movie theater, where after you watch the movie, you enjoy it, you get out without feeling any obligation, but just wait for the next one. One of my dear friends and brothers puts it very well when he says that <laughs> when you go to school or send your kids to school, the least you expect is for them to learn grow and then transform, and that is evident by the progression they make in their academic life. However, when you come to church, you seated here this afternoon, you seem to be comfortable sitting there for three years straight, and you show no sign of growth, no change, no transformation, and you're okay with it? Just because this is church? No, things should not be like that. We have to seek and desire to grow in our knowledge and love for God because that is what will propel us into serving him. Service for God should be born from our knowledge and our love for God. Now, when I talk about service, I also would like to 
to make something clear to us this morning because I think there's a bit of misunderstanding that sometimes happens. Many people have in their minds categorized who they think needs to do service. And in that group, they themselves have removed themselves, and so they are not in, but they look at others. I would like us to briefly meditate on Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 15, so that I show you the clear responsibilities that different groups of people have. And maybe by doing that, I can exonerate some of our leaders in the church. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 15, beginning with verse 11, it says, It is he, meaning God, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Now, at that point, I can say full stop. Then I'm going to ask a question, why is God giving some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? And the answer is in verse 12. To prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So, what is the role of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Amos, Pastor Peter, Pastor Raphael? What is their responsibility? To equip you and me. So that you and me can do what? We go out to actually do the works of service. So if you've been thinking that it is Pastor Andrew's responsibility, think again. The Word of God has told him what he needs to do, and he's doing a good job at it. In this context of CLA, you and I are God's people. So we need to go out there and do service because we are being equipped. This is my favorite part. How long do you think that service should be? And the answer to that is in verses 13 to 15. How long do you think that service should be? I will request that we read together verses 13 to 15 because it's projected for us, because that gives us an answer of how long you and I should be serving. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every single wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head. That is Christ. Hallelujah. So if you thought you would check out from service, think again, because it has to be done until we all reach unity in the faith. And that is not small. You may be feeling that I just set you up, and yes, I did. Because you've read the verse yourself, you see what it says, and it's talking about you. That's why it's using pronouns, we, as a body of believers. For that reason, the things you have heard entrust to reliable men. The use of the word entrust in 2 Timothy 2 verse 2 signifies assigning the responsibility of doing something to someone. And that is how we transition to our third and final point because that's where we talk about the why. So that they are qualified to teach others. You will remember where we started from. The what, the things you have heard me say. The who, and trust to reliable people. The why so that they are qualified to teach others. Again, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, 
and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. The goal of winning, winning souls, is to grow them so that they can be let go and do the same. That's where the winning in W-E-A-N-I-G comes from. So you will notice that it becomes a vicious circle, allowing for multiplication, because when you win, you grow and you win, those you have winned also begin to win, grow others, and win them, and it continues like that. And so the church grows, God's word grows, and the kingdom gets all the glory. May the Lord help us to be convinced about what we have heard and grant us the courage to teach others who can also be able to teach others. Amen. We shall pray at this point, and I would like to request the following. You may be seated here this afternoon, and you do not have a relationship with Jesus as Savior, Lord, and King, and would like to give you an opportunity to get into that relationship. We have spoken of Scripture alone, faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone, and to the glory of God alone. And maybe all these things are just new to you and you're wondering what they stand for. Then this particular call is for you. I would like to request, if you're seated there, you know you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, feel free to shoot up your hand and our ushers will take notice of you. Then we will make a plan on how to connect. Is there anyone in this auditorium this afternoon who wants to commit their lives to Jesus and make him Lord, Savior, and King? If you're there, feel free to shoot up your hand and I will be sure to notice it from here. Then we, we do the right thing. Right, we thank God. The second point is for you and I to pray for ourselves. I will request that we all arise and we take a few minutes to pray for ourselves and to ask God to help us do the right thing as Christians. Desire to grow in His Word and in our relationship with Him, even as we commit to grow others. And then I will close us at the end. Let us all pray. Our God and our Father, we are so thankful to you because of your love that is so amazing. Thank you because of your love that is indescribable. Thank you because of your love that's incomprehensible. We thank you for teaching us through your word and challenging us to teach the truth that we have learned and heard from you to others. Lord, we commit ourselves to you and ask that you help us to be able to put this word to heart and to do what we need to do in the various contexts and circumstances that you place us in. Lord, we pray that you open our eyes to the various opportunities that you would like us to use and grow other people, but also opportunities that we ourselves can use and grow from so that we can take advantage of them and be able to commit ourselves. Lord, we want to pray and ask that when we have been approached and requested by fellow 
brothers and sisters for counsel and support in one way or another. You help us to respond to that call and to be able to do the right thing. We pray that even as we close this afternoon, may you continue to speak to us even as you challenge us more on how best we can apply this word. And may it be taking root in our hearts and lives so that it can grow and bear fruit that will last to eternal life. We pray all this in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may take your seats. Sunday and a blessed week. God bless you all. Let's give it up to the Lord and the blessing of our brother uh, in sharing. Amen. I was reminded of what Peter calls those, the ministers he was talking about. He calls them shepherds. And if you know, the sheep are the ones which give birth. It's never the shepherds. I hope you get that. Amen. Uh, we've come to the end of the service this afternoon. Just want to remind us, um, those of us who may want to visit in Nango, our sister Joy, waving there, uh, is available. She's uh, at the back. Uh, please uh, talk to her and uh, register. Uh, secondly, if you are in need of prayer, any sort of prayer, probably need to give your life to the Lord like we've been challenged today or any other prayer. We are going through tough time and you may need somebody to stand with you. Those of us that are in front here would be available uh, to be able to minister to you. And if you came late and what, did not get a chance to give, we have uh, an offering slot with a lit sign and we also have the POS and it's also possible to give uh, via mobile money. Amen? Let's stand up and share the words of, of the grace and as we do I pray that the Lord will bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God be with you.